In this video, we're going to talk about the strategy pattern and how you can use it to get varying behavior on different objects. One interesting thing about the strategy pattern is it's one of the most straightforward ways to use abstraction and utilize patterns. So I think it's a good place to start. As an overview, the strategy pattern is essentially abstracting some kind of behavior, storing it as a variable on an object, and then being able to swap out different types of this behavior. So one way to think about this is if we have a base class or some abstraction that defines a thing that we can do, each of the different classes that inherit need to be able to do that thing, but each one can do that thing just a little bit differently or in a different way. And then our object will hold on to whatever the current behavior is. So we can swap this out at runtime. This could be, for example, a weapon or an ability. It could be a type of movement. It could be pretty much anything you want, but some type of behavior. And maybe at this point in the game, we want this behavior and then that'll run. And then we can put this behavior into it and then that'll run and then we can swap it out and things can change during gameplay, which is super important for building a good modular system. So what this might look like in code is you'd have an interface or some sort of abstraction over here that defines a method that all things need to have commonly. So we'll have our abstraction, and then we'll have a set of different behaviors. Each one will be slightly different, but each one will implement this method that it needs. So this one will do one behavior, this one will do a different one, this one will do a different one. And then we'll have our object that stores whatever the current object behavior is and then runs it. So maybe inside of update, we'll update whatever the behavior is and we'll call that, and that'll link up with whatever behavior we have equipped and then we could do a different one and we could swap it out and then we could do a different one and swap it out. So that's the idea um, and that's how you could implement it in code. We're gonna look at two different examples and the first one is going to be using a weapon system and I'm choosing this one because I wanna show you how to use base classes as a strategy pattern and then we'll also look at interfaces as well. So in our weapon system, we're going to have a weapon base that can shoot. All weapons will need to shoot. Um, in this case, it's, it's gun, so I should call that a gun base. As long as all weapons can share a common method, then we can call that um, inside of our weapon system. So we'll have a blaster and we'll have a launcher and each one will shoot and they'll probably be pretty similar, but we could change them individually if we want. And in our weapon system, we're going to keep track of whatever our equipped weapon is. And if we press a key, we'll take our equipped weapon as our abstract. And we know that all of our weapon bases can shoot. So we know that we can call equipped weapon dot shoot. And then if we have a blaster, it'll shoot. And then if we have a launcher, it'll shoot. Um, <laughs> funny thing here, this is supposed to say weapon dot shoot. And I actually have dot fire. So, uh, ignore that. I think I was tweaking a slide right before I made the video. Equipped weapon dot shoot. And the second example that we'll look at is using the strategy pattern for a projectile movement. And we're going to define an interface called iMovable. And on this interface, all objects that implement this interface will need to also implement move and define what the move function will do. And then we'll have a projectile that will keep track of a movable behavior called move behavior and whichever one we have set the projectile will move according to that and we'll look at an example of how to swap those out at runtime now let's look at an example inside of unity on how we can implement the strategy pattern so i'm going to hit play so you can see what we have and we have a first person controller who can move around um, if i press one i'll make sure that my blaster is equipped I fire, we'll spawn some projectiles, they'll move however. If I press two, I'll equip my launcher. I can also fire and you'll notice that that's a little bit different. And then, you know, I can move around, whatever. Um, I also wanna show you this. Uh, we're gonna look at how to change the movement pattern of projectiles later on. But in this case, if I shoot this, you'll see it slow down and then speed up at the end. Maybe it's more obvious with this. 
yeah, like that. Um, but in this, we'll we'll call it like a slow field or a stop field or something. It stops the behavior because we're swapping out the movement behavior of the projectile at runtime. Let's take a look. And inside of Unity, first let's take a look at our weapon system. And this is going to be kind of complicated, so I'll try to break this down one at a time. Our weapon system is going to have a base, and I want to show you an example with a base class and with an interface. So we'll look at the base class version first. And inside of our weapon base, all we've done is we've defined a abstract method called shoot. We've also declared that this entire weapon base class should be abstract, meaning that we can't create an instance of weapon base all we can do is we can inherit from this class. So we could have a launcher that inherits from weapon base, but we can't create this by itself. So we're we're only using this for functionality. We're not instantiating a weapon base. We're just inheriting and pulling some information from it. But anything that inherits from weapon base needs to implement the shoot method. And that's because we added this, this keyword called abstract. It means incomplete. It means that we need to define it if we want to inherit from this thing. And we're also getting the type of projectile we want to shoot, spawn location, shoot particle, shoot sound, and all that good stuff. Now let's look at a launcher and a blaster. Uh, let's look at launcher first. Our launcher inherits from weapon base. And because we're inheriting from weapon base, we need to implement the shoot method. So if I press F12, weapon base, we, we need to implement this method with code. So I'm gonna hop back. We have override, which is how you, you define an abstract method. And we're gonna define shoot. So in this case, we're going to shoot the launcher. We're going to instantiate a projectile, play particles, all this other stuff that we, def we defined what these were in the base, but we're you know playing them here. Um, you could pretty much do anything you want to give the launcher different behavior at this point. And we, we're doing something similar with the blaster. We're still defining a shoot. And we have pretty similar code here. Um, we could do other, you know, more specific things as part of the example if we want. But in this case, we're doing something very similar. We're just instantiating a projectile and playing some particles and sound effects and whatnot. Now, where this all comes together is going to be the weapon system. And the weapon system is actually attached to the FPS controller. And the weapon system will take in a prefab for whatever starting weapon we want. It's going to take in a prefab for our first slot weapon and our second slot weapon. And these prefabs are going to have the, so this is going to have the blaster script on it. And it's going to have the launcher script on it. And because both of these, both the launcher and the blaster are types of weapon base, if we expose a variable of type weapon base, then we can accept either a launcher or a blaster, which is pretty neat. Um, this is something that you cannot do with interfaces, but you can do with uh, base classes or with abstract classes in Unity, at least at the moment of recording, you can't. Uh, well, you, you can't easily without some custom assets and whatnot. Okay, so we're keeping track of whatever our currently equipped weapon is. We are um, equipping it based off of a button press. So if we press one, then equip it. If we press two, equip the second slot. Um, we have some code for equipping. Don't worry about this. I'm just creating a new object and destroying it. There's better ways to do that. Doesn't matter, not part of the pattern in this case. But if we ever shoot the weapon, so on left mouse click, if we ever shoot the weapon, we're calling our weapon base. So equip, equipped weapon, calling this dot shoot. Because all weapons that inherit from weapon base implement shoot, they'll all use their independent shoot function. So if we have a launcher equipped, then it'll do launcher.shoot. If we have a blaster equipped, it'll do blaster.shoot. So hopefully that makes sense. And our strategy pattern comes in play here, where we're keeping track of an equipped weapon. And any equipped weapon that is a weapon base using an abstract shoot method, they'll all have different behavior. So we're kind of swapping in at runtime, different objects with different behavior. Let's look at another example that's using interfaces and I think um, a lot more direct. So we have our projectiles. Let's take a look at that. We have a iMovable interface. Pretty simple, just if something is movable, 
then it needs to call a move function. Then we have a few different types of movement. So if we look at linear move behavior, it implements iMovable, which means that we need to have this method move. And then we, are, we need to take in a rigid body inside of the constructor. Now, if, you, if you've never used a constructor before, um, it's something you would use on something that is not a mono behavior. It's just when this thing is created, you can give it any references or dependencies it needs, and you can pass it in at the moment that it's created, then you could store them up here, uh, cache them into, into some member variables. And then you can use these later on when you need. So it's just a really handy way of passing in exactly what you need rather than trying to search for them. Anyways, linear move behavior, just do our move function. As long as we have our rigid body, then we're just moving it in forward direction. Accelerate is pretty similar. We're still moving it, but we're giving it an accelerate speed and we're just increasing the speed every time we call move. And then finally, this is this is something called a uh, null object pattern. But I, just to show you, you can actually define the move behavior as none, which means that it does not move. We're just literally doing nothing when we call move. And that's going to be useful if we want to stop movement for something, which we'll look at in a second. So again, each of these things call iMovable, and iMovable mean, declares that everything has to have a move function. So we're just filling this out. And because these are basic C-sharp classes, we can't attach these to a mono behavior. We need to um, use a constructor and pass in things like rigid body and whatnot. And then finally, inside of our projectile, this is where we are giving a projectile a type of movement. So in this case, this is our pattern. Um, we have our abstraction. This is our behavior, our move behavior right here. Because we have different kinds of iMovable, we can swap out different kinds of iMovable and define how this projectile moves. So in awake, we are giving it an initial move behavior, in this case, just linear. So we're creating a new one and assigning it to move behavior. So once we've assigned the move behavior, every single fixed update, we're going to call its dot move. And you'll notice that we're giving it some dependencies here, a rigid body and a travel speed. Then we're just telling whatever move behavior is equipped, we're telling it to move. We want to define a new behavior. We, we just have a little method here. If we pass it a new iMovable, we'll reassign the move behavior and do something different. As long as it has a move method, then we can assign it. So we can change projectile flight behavior. And so you'll see that just as a reminder, if we hit play, and we shoot, this is linear behavior right here, right? It's moving at a constant speed. But what we've done is on these trigger volumes over here, so we have a stop field and the slow field. On our slow field, we on trigger enter, if it's a projectile, and we can prove that it's a projectile, then we can assign it a new behavior. And in our slow field, we're gonna slow it down so it's gonna start at zero, and then it's going to accelerate into an even faster speed. So it's linear, and then we assign it an accelerate, goes back to zero, and then speeds up over time. And we can see that here if I go back and press play. And all we're doing is we're assigning a different iMovable to it on trigger enter. Now it slows down and then it accelerates out. Stop field, we're doing something very similar where we test to see if a projectile has entered the trigger. And if it has, then we assign it a no move behavior, meaning that the projectile will stop entirely. And we're doing this by just getting a reference to the projectile, calling the set move behavior, and giving it a no move behavior. Here, see? We can swap out different move behavior at runtime. Hit play. See how they just stopped moving? So it's pretty cool. You can, you can expand this in other ways too. Um, but if there's any kind of behavior that you want to swap out or change at runtime, the strategy pattern is a good 
way to approach that. And there's different implementations of that that are very similar. So in a way, you you know, you could have your different um, behaviors as different components and you could just assign different components uh, at runtime. Like that's one way around it. But But it's all the same concept where you are tracking a generic behavior and you are replacing specific behavior during runtime. So anyway, strategy pattern is really useful in games because behaviors on objects and games change over time. You get new power-ups, you uh, get new abilities, you swap out weapons and, and all those fun things. Um, so hopefully that helps you think about abstraction and just think about how you can put together simple systems with swappable behavior.